a work on something, share something with you, do somewhat of a demo, and then I chat with y'all through the chat here, both on Facebook and on YouTube, and I answer some questions as they pop up, as long as I can answer them here, right? Especially if it's something based on what I'm showing. So welcome to another episode. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about working with larger cones or even these mini ones because they don't always fit on all the home sewing machines. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that, share some tips, some items that I have here in front of me. And then I have a few other things just to catch y'all up on in case you missed the last couple of Whip Wednesdays. But first, let's go ahead and chat with everybody real quick, see where we have friends tuning in from. Hi <coughs> Excuse me. Hi, Monique. Uh, she's tuning in from Maryland. I'm coming to y'all from my home sewing studio. I live in North Central Florida, where it is a toasty 80-something degrees Fahrenheit today. And it looks like the audio is working. So if you can see me and hear me, let me know in the chat and drop me a line and let me know where you're tuning in from. All right. All right. Uh, let's see. Margaret from Michigan. Garnet tuning in from Mexico. Hola, Garnet. Don is tuning in from Washington State. We have a friend a little further south than we are, Ms. Deborah, tuning in from Port St. Lucie, Florida. All right. Okay, great. So I see that y'all can see me and hear me. So let's go ahead and get started. Marlene is tuning in from Naperville, Illinois. Awesome. We got a lot of friends tuning in today. And of course, Miss Kay from Jacksonville, just up the road. All right, so let me catch y'all up. Let's go ahead and swap over to this camera angle so I can start sharing some of the stuff I have here. This is, who remembers this, from a previous Whip Wednesday where we were talking about Quilt As You Go mug rugs. I'm so surprised that so many of you were so interested in this project. I think maybe because it's kind of quick and easy, but most of all, I think a scrap buster. So last time I shared with y'all, I, I measured it, cut out the binding, we stitched it on by machine. And so I wanted to share with those of you that maybe missed out on that Whip Wednesday episode, what it turned out like. And then as a reminder, because I'm still getting some emails from those of you that missed the episode asking, how did I finish the back on this? So Let's recap because I still have another one here that I need to do. We did the Quilt As You Go in Whip Wednesday 26, where I made the Quilt As You Go mug rug and it was just the chunks of fabric being sewn to the batting by itself, okay? Then I added the backing fabric. And yes, some people ask, well, why didn't you just quilt as you go through the backing fabric? You can make it any way you want to. I didn't have to. So, and I didn't feel like doing it that day. So I just have it like this. And this is the same way that I finished this one. You can see that there's no stitching through here, which it doesn't matter. Okay. Because the batting that I use is Quilter's Dream, hundred percent cotton request batting. And it requires that the quilting stitches be eight inches within one line of the other, right? So like with at least, or I should say at the max eight inches apart. And because we sewed the fabric right to the batting, they are definitely, there are lines of quilting here, the same construction seams that we use for the strips of fabric are way less. I mean, this is like less than an inch, this is a couple inches, and so the batting itself is secured as the manufacturer required, okay? The backing is just a flat little piece. Now, I did get maybe like 10 or 12 questions. People were asking, what was the size of the mug rug? Now, I mentioned this when we made this, you can make mug rugs whatever size you want. The idea is that a mug rug is bigger than a coaster, but smaller than a placemat. And I actually have a mug here, water real quick. And you can see, you basically just wanna have space for a mug and something else. A cookie, a Danish, something. Okay, a muffin, whatever it is that you want, that's kind of like the idea for the mug rug. So we'll take some quick measurements real quick share these with you. So this one measures six and three quarters by 10. You can make them wider, longer, whatever you feel like making. Okay. And because remember I had pieced this together as uh, one panel, then I just thought, oh, it's kind of big for one. So I just sliced it down the middle and made two. So I wasn't really going off of measurements per se, just like these would make two cute size mug rugs. Right? So then the backing goes on wrong side of the backing fabric to the batting side of the mug rug. You can use spray based, you can hand baste it, and really if it's as small as this, you won't really have to do anything. Then I trimmed it up and squared everything up, and then we just made and attached the binding. That was it, okay? As long as you don't have any bubbling back here and you keep this nice and smooth, when you attach the binding, it's just coming along for the ride and it's gonna get caught right in there, all right? So I just wanted to give y'all a little update on the mug rugs, but I think it turned out super cute, right? 
I love a good pop of color and these to me the colors were so muted it really was like a whole neutral mug rug so I knew I needed a pop of something funky like this orange right here for the binding and the binding was stitched down by machine we did that last show okay so let's move that aside and let's talk a little bit about quilting thread because maybe was it Friday I think we did a long arm quilting one and so we were talking about how we now carry the glide thread in our online shop remember anything I talk about that we sell you can find it at craftygemini.com shop we have hundreds and hundreds of products there so we're carrying this glide thread it's a 40 weight 100% polyester thread it's amazing for free motion quilting both on a sewing machine and on a long arm okay so we talked about last on Friday when I did a, a free motion uh, long arm video is that what I did on Friday I can't even remember yes okay so we did that and I was talking about how now we stock the glide thread in 23 different colors well then I got a bunch of emails of people asking can you use this thread in your sewing machine and you absolutely can I talk about that there if you're in my online climby quilt club you know that we definitely did some quilting i would show you the other quilt but i already stuck it up on the, on the wall one of my little quarter circle mini quilts but this is the clamshell pillow that i made and this was all done on a sit down uh, sewing machine with the same glide thread and i just kind of slightly wonky lines back and forth i don't even know if you can see that yeah you can so and this was using the light gray thread okay so i made this envelope pillow cover the same way i quilted the orange peel quilt top there's batting behind it and then there's a plain fabric behind it and then i turned it into an envelope pillow cover okay so same thing on the sewing machine or on the long arm and so then i wanted to talk a little bit about using the little mini cones or bigger cones or serger thread on your regular sewing machine some of you may see that unless you're working with like the super teensy spools like even smaller ones than this you may find that you have trouble loading up the thread on your sewing machine now i will say with this juki that i have here it's the 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 area for the for the thread spool is here and it's kind of wide like i would say this probably even offers me a little bit more room than some machines that have like the lid on it where you have like all the decorative stitches listed out for you there right because in that case oftentimes instead of just being open and exposed like this it's like in a little groove area oh i was oh, okay sorry oopsie yeah i'll scoot it up i'm trying to gauge where exactly my camera stuff is at okay yeah, let me scoot it just a hair over, y'all. There. Okay. So, and every machine is going to be slightly different, right? The ones that I'm talking about. So, this is where uh, I put the thread spool on this Juki LB5020. Okay? Just like that. Now, on some machines, you are going to have this, like, in the front, right, where you lift up that lid and you have decorative stitches. And so you may not have as much room as I have here on this machine. So if you find that, say you buy a spool of thread like this and it's really thick around and it, like, rubs against the machine when you load it up and you're trying to use it, right? I, I know that's happened to me before on different machines. Then this is going to be the solution for you as well as if, you know, oftentimes we can find these larger king cones, big cones of thread that you may want to use obviously there's no way that i'm going to be able to load this here i mean there's there's just there's no way right now some machines will come with a detachable and secondary uh thread spool pin that you can attach here and this one actually has it it would go here and it's just like a short pin like that so it allows me to put uh, something on top but even then, I can tell that the bottom base of this is going to be hitting the bobbin winder, right? So every machine is going to be slightly different. Just check out to see what you're working with. But the solution to all these things is right here. <laughs> this standalone thread stand, okay? Now, I, I am going to point this out because I will get this question all the time, and a lot of people use it, especially if you're on a budget. These cheaper, like super inexpensive cones of serger thread. Now, I will say a disclaimer. This is not the highest quality thread. If you're trying to make like amazing, hard-wearing projects <laughs> that, are, that you want to last a long time, this is not going to be it, okay? So don't use a serger thread for something that you really want to last a long time. It's a really kind of low quality polyester thread, but in a pinch, if you're working on kids projects, just whatever little craft items, I'm not going to tell you not to use it. 
Um, I'm not a thread snob like that. I just, you know, oftentimes we've all been there, right? We use whatever we have on hand. So anyways, if you have cones of thread, whether they're like this, this is, um, I was surprised to find this in my stash. I totally had forgotten I had it. This is a cone of 40 weight or a fill variegated polyester thread, which would be super cool for long arm quilting. And actually I'm going to leave this here in this studio because I could see myself using this. And the color just changes from like yellows to oranges to kind of reddish orange and stuff like that. So again, something like this. So here's how I would use this. Well, actually, first I'm going to show you how to build this little thing. It literally takes seconds. We sell them in the online shop. It's lightweight and it is fully collapsible. Now I have had one of these for maybe 15 years that had a really thick and heavy metal plate, which was great because even at high speeds of sewing, uh, the thread cone wouldn't move on it, but it's super clunky. And trust me, when that metal base <laughs> falls on the floor or on your foot, it is not a good look. So this one, when I discovered it, I was like, oh, I definitely have to stock this in the, in the shop. It has a small footprint when it's fully compressed down. This is like a little telescoping kind of guide thing for the thread. It comes apart super easily and the weight or the base is weighted, but it's not metal. Okay. It's plastic and it almost feels like it has like sand or something. I don't know. It just has like this weight to it, but it's kind of lightweight, weird but it definitely works. And I've tried it on my high speed semi-industrial machine. So we sell it in the online shop. We'll have a link for it below, both in the Facebook chat and in uh, the YouTube video description box. So I'm gonna show you. You definitely will need uh, a Phillips head screwdriver. And then it's super easy to put together, y'all. So here are all the parts. And I just like to show this because sometimes, you know, these things don't even come with instructions or anything. So there's a little screw with a little ring, like a wannabe washer. So I'm going to put that there. This is the base. It, I don't even know how to describe it, but it's definitely weighted enough and it won't hurt you if it falls on you or hits the floor. Okay. So that's a good deal right there. The little metal pin that's by itself. Yeah. Let me scoot up a little bit. The metal pin goes in the center. This is where you're going to put your cone of thread, your little mini cone. You can even use smaller ones. It don't matter. Then let's go ahead and put these guys together. The other one is this one, the one that stretches out. There's a, 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 a screw on the end of it already. So you're going to take the top plastic bit with the guide and just screw that all the way on. Okay. And then this part also needs to be screwed in. So I'm just going to insert it here, turn this over and the screw goes underneath. And then you just take your screwdriver and tighten it all the way up. Oop, make sure that you're holding that all the way in. There we go. I'm going to hold it in and then just finish screwing it in. And there it's nice and tight. And the screw does go into this piece and there is the, the threads on the receiving end of it are metal. So it's not like a little plastic thing that you know is going to strip. Okay. Let me finish tightening this guy up. Okay. So now we can pull up here. We're going to put our little mini cone of glide. And now the only thing is that if you've worked with these, um, the guides like this before, you may find that like you can just slip it through on the side on this thread spool stand. It's actually welded together there. So you actually do have to slip it through the little eye of the guide here. So just go like that. All right. Now some people, and I'll show you how you use it with your regular sewing machine. Let me make sure that my machine is in clear view here. Is it? Yeah, looks okay. So some people use this part of it to kind of level it and put it down to where it's like at the same level of the thread. I don't really do that. I just pull it all the way till it goes as high as it can go. And I grab my thread from here. Where's my end? Make sure I thread it this way so that it's coming off the front. And so I can more easily, I'm going blind. Okay, there. And so that then I can thread my machine. Okay. And of course I had already pulled a bunch of this thread off. Let me just trim some off. So then from here, I would just thread my sewing machine just like I normally would as if I had a smaller spool right here. Okay. And so let's continue with the process. So I'm going to thread this sewing machine. I just turned it on. I have not touched anything with tension. It's exactly as it was for when I was sewing with 50 weight cotton thread. Okay. Let me try to get the whole, I know, I know I'm trying to. 
it's oh weird God. for me to see. <laughs> okay, so I think there is okay. Can y'all see this? Okay, this guy's right here. So now we're just going to thread the machine like we normally would. And this is what I want to show you about the glide thread because you see a lot of long arm quilters use it. You see like award winning free motion, uh, you like sit down free motion quilters use it. But you can use this on your regular sewing machine. Now granted, this Juki is the bomb. It's like a beginner-ish, like a little leveled up beginner level machine. But I want you to see that I don't even have to adjust anything as far as tension goes when I'm using this silkier, shinier, softer thread. Okay? Am I okay there? Okay. So, and I do have a bobbin. This is a question I often get asked. Do you use the silkier thread, right? This glide thread in the bobbin. And I absolutely do. Okay? So I have a bobbin in here that I've already wound and put in there with the same glide thread. Okay, and then let me grab a little quilt sandwich that I made to show y'all. So say you were doing straight line quilting. Most machines you're probably gonna have to put on the walking foot, right, to help feed all the layers through. This machine, I don't have to, but you know, just, just know whatever the settings are in your specific make and model. But you can see that I have, whoop. Okay, maybe there's gonna be the spot. Uh, on this one, you can see I have batting in the middle. So two layers of just that orange cotton fabric. Now I'm going to do just like a straight line of quilting because I want to show y'all the stitch quality and I have not touched any of the tension settings. It's still in the mid range here. I'm going to length, oops, lengthen. Oh, stitch zero. Let me see. Am I on the right one? Zero, zero. Let me turn this on and off. I want to make sure that I'm on straight stitch center needle position and that I can, there we go. So I can lengthen my stitch length to like four millimeters in length. And I like that when I'm doing, when I'm quilting or doing decorative stitching, because remember the longer your stitch, the slight, I wouldn't say weaker necessarily, but it more easily can get caught on stuff and will rip apart more easily than a short, super tiny stitch, right? But because this is not a construction seam, and you'll often hear me say that in my videos and my courses, I'm not trying to hold these two layers of fabric super together because this is not a seam. This is just decorative quilting. So for me, in the shinier glide thread, I love the way the stitch definition looks when it's a little bit longer. So on this machine, I'm gonna set it to four millimeters in length, and I'm just gonna stitch. Make sure y'all can see that. And you see like this machine just, and we do have some of these machines in stock, by the way. We did restock. So it just like pulls the fabric through, even though it's multiple layers with the batting in it. And I'm gonna give y'all a close up so you can see this. Whoop, wrong close up, not the machine, the stitching. There we go. You see that? And that's the glide thread on top and on the bottom. Amazing. So you can imagine if you had your machine set up for free motion quilting, whether you know you have a machine in a bait, it like in, set into a table, or if you're using an open stippling foot or a walking foot, whatever it is, that thread, being able to put it on the little standalone thread stand would look amazing, right? Great, but that is a smaller one. So some of you may find that your sewing machine will allow you to use the glide thread just as it comes. Okay, let's try a little bit with this, um, this fancy variegated orophil thread. It's gonna super blend into this orange fabric, I think. And I think that's, that's always fun to see because that way, when you're working on your projects, you can try and gauge like, will this color pop on that fabric in the patchwork or will it blend in? And I can guarantee you, this orange is gonna blend in. All right, so let's feed it through here and now, What's my setup here? Remember I said this uh, Aurafil variegated thread says it's a 40 weight polyester filament thread. It's the same weight as the glide. So I'm gonna leave the bobbin in there because the bobbin has glide thread in it. And again, remember I said we, we sell the glide thread in our online shop. It's like $5 a spool. It is so affordable and will last you a good long bit. And it's the same weight as this. Let me just thread this right quick. And now the needle, some of y'all might ask, is just an 8012. Whoop, come on. 
is just an 8012 universal. Like there's not even anything fancy. So oftentimes students will say, okay, well, I like to quilt, I like to piece, but I don't have a setup for quilting. I mean, and this is it right here. It's like three layers, and this is a basic machine, right? So three layers, we have our batting in there. You could easily do some straight line quilting or slightly wavy quilting on any quilt at home. You don't really need anything super fancy, okay? All right. Oh, thanks, Heather. She says, don't forget to like the video. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, if you're on Facebook, you even feel free to click the share button. That way, if you have other crafty friends that are on Facebook right now, they can get a notification that we're live. Okay, so I have it set to the same four millimeter stitch length, and we just have the Aurifil thread, okay, that I fed right through my thread stand. And we're just gonna stitch a straight line. And this is also, I think, a good time to know, although I say like this little Juki machine, y'all have seen me use this machine here on Whip Wednesdays for months, right, since last year. And you see that I've sewn like thin fabrics, thicker stuff, stretch knits, wovens. If you have a machine and you only have like one entry level machine, but you want to get into quilting, this quilter's dream request batting is gonna be your best friend because you can do stuff like this. I mean, this machine can handle a thicker batting as well, but if you're kind of getting into it, introducing yourself a little bit to like actually stitching through the multiple layers of a quilt, definitely we have the batting in our online shop. Try it out because you can see even without a walking foot, the batting is substantial enough to feel like a proper batting. It's lightweight if you're making a quilt for somebody that lives in a warmer climate. Let me show you this, this variegated thread. You can't even see it. <laughs> look at that. It just blends in here on the yellow side. You can kind of see the stitches a little bit more. And look at that. Straight gray on the back from the glide. Now you see what that means? The tension is perfect. I don't see any of the yellow, the orange, the yellow red popping up on the back. It's this third line here of stitching. Okay, so this is something else. People often think that they have to have the exact same thread on top and on the bottom, or excuse me, the same color on the top and the bottom. And you can see that with the same weight, I didn't even touch the tension settings on this machine, and I was easily able to get the one color on top and the bobbin thread on the bottom. So if you had like a light fabric on your backing and you wanted this orange stuff to blend or pop on the front of your quilt, but you needed the gray to just blend in on the back, right there, that's an option, right? Okay, Jen says she loves glide. Awesome. Uh, Maria's asking if I have the variegated thread in the shop. I do not, but I will be looking into carrying some. You know, we kind of, when we bring on new products, we bring them in little by little and kind of slowly. So we went from nine colors of glide to 23 colors of glide. So we'll keep adding some other stuff in. Hi, Gloria. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, Ruth says she just got her snips. She loves them. I think we still do have some of these in the shop. And then a quick reminder, because I know a lot of you tune in every week with us or for flash sales too, we do have the mist spray water bottles back in stock. Those are in the Martelli roundabout cutting mats are back in stock. We just, we got a big order of a bunch of stuff. You know, there's always some ship, uh, shipping delays, but we did get a bunch of the stuff that we were waiting in. Okay, let me just scroll through here real quick. Um, Maria, oh, Maria was asking what was the thread with the changing color? It's an Aurifil thread and this is color 5512. Hopefully that helps somebody if you're interested in getting that kind of fiery yellow, orange, <laughs> reddish color of thread, of variegated thread. But like Sulky makes variegated thread. Wonderful makes variegated thread. There's so many cool variegated threads out there on the market. Okay. So let's see. All right, Barbara was asking about the weight of this machine, and I want to say it weighs it, it weighs less. I think 18 pounds is with the box and everything. This is more like 12 or 13. Look at that. It's not that heavy, y'all. It's a great little travel machine, but it's still solid. It doesn't feel like a cheapy plastic one. And I think by now, of all the stuff that y'all have seen me use this machine to make, you know it's it's a solid one for, for a little over 300 bucks, and we ship free in the US. So if you're looking for a starter machine for somebody, or maybe a travel machine, I know some of my customers uh, bought this machine to have it like in an RV, in a smaller space. It's definitely a good one. All right, um, Leslie says, can you show how you threaded the top tension disc? So I'm assuming that the top tension disc you're talking about, the only one when you're threading from the top is this here, is um, where the tension discs are. So when the presser foot is up, 
the tension discs that are in here are open. And so that allows you to thread it and just kind of drop it in there. When we put the presser foot down on a sewing machine, these discs close. And that is what is applying the tension based on whatever the tension setting we set it to is. Okay. So for what you're asking and just pretend that I didn't pull the thread out the top, <laughs> they tell you like pull it out the bottom. It's okay. This is not even cotton thread. There's no lint. Uh, I'm going to go behind that arrow and then I just slide it down in there because my presser foot is up. As long as I drop it in that groove, it's going to fall right in between with the open tension discs. So that's actually a good troubleshooting tip. If you have your presser foot down, down here and you drop this, let me pull it out again. So if my presser foot is down and I drop this here, I can see it from where I am that it's just on top. It's the thread is lying on top of the, the closed uh, tension discs. So if you continue and you go and you thread it all the way through, you might notice that as you're sewing, you have all kinds of issues going on. And it's because of that. Now, I will say on some machines, you can thread it with the presser foot down. And it's just like when you take the stitch it like falls into place and it grabs it, but it's just good practice to have your presser foot up when you go to thread through your tension discs so that the thread falls in between them, presser foot goes down, the tension discs close, it applies the proper tension, that way you get that good stitch definition, okay? All right, um, Nancy's asking, how many colors does the glide come in? I wanna say hundreds. <laughs> Uh, I definitely won't be carrying all the colors just because I mean there's a huge range like if you want to go from white to like a natural beige cream color There's probably like 25 colors. It's not that serious for me I y'all have heard me say it before and I said it last week the light gray is my number one all-time most used color And I've been using glide I want to say for eight or more years And this is the one color that I use most often on light fabrics white fabrics gray fabrics even some mid-range obviously not on the darkest fabrics, but I don't really make quilts that are really dark either. Okay. Let's see. Oh, Lisa's asking what weight is the glide thread? It's a 40 weight. We talked about that earlier. It's a 40 weight. That's why the Aurafil variegated thread that I used here is the same weight. So I just left the glide in the bobbin, um, the same, you know, cause it's the same weight, even though it's kind of silky, just be mindful of your specific sewing machine make and model, because you might have to adjust the tensions to make it like a little bit tighter in the tension because it is so silky, but I use the same thread in the bobbin as well. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, if y'all were asking how many colors we carry the glide and we carry it in 23 colors right now, but I'm always adding new things to it. So as we get low on some of the colors, I will restock it and I'll probably add a few extras in there. Okay. Awesome. Heather says she loves her new misting water bottle. If y'all have seen me pressing fabric, you know that I don't pour fabric into my actual steam iron, even though it can steam because we live on a well, I have super hard water. So instead I put the water here and then I mist and then add the heat of a dry iron to create the same steam effect, okay? Jan says that the, the light gray is her go-to also. Okay. Uh, all right, so Janice says, what size bobbins does the machine use? It uses class 15 bobbins and Janice, yours should have come with a few. So if you pull off the little accessory thing here to kind of expose the free arm, you should see that there's a little accessory bag here with a couple of extra bobbins. But it takes the class 15 bobbins that a lot, I mean, I'll go as far as to say most home sewing machines that are made by like the usual manufacturers um, use the class 15, you know, most brother machines, a Janome, like the, the entry level ish machines, most of them take that same size. Okay. Uh, let's see. Do, do, do. Okay. So that's what I wanted to show y'all how easy it is one to work with larger spools or cones of thread. Okay. If you have the standalone thread stand, and I'll just set this aside here. Okay. So you just put whatever cone you're working with, the glide and then you run it through here remember I said that the top part here of this guide is welded together so you can't slip it there like you would say on a serge or on a cover stitch machine that it's kind of separate so you can just floss it through you just have to feed it actually through okay and then you just put it to the side of your machine and boom you can work on any home sewing machine uh, directly from there using the bigger cones. Okay, so I think that this also is a good tip for, for people who are, you know, a little bit intimidated or feel like they maybe need to have a whole new setup just to do some free motion quilting or some quilting with some specialty threads on their home sewing machines. 
just throw it on there. You're good to go. We do sell the thread stand. We also carry the glide in 23 different colors. Remember that? And it comes in this super little box. So even if you're not using it all the time, just take the pieces apart and store it. I mean, it's so small. Look at that. And I just quit using my, um, the big bulky heavy metal one that I had because the pieces would pop off. They'd get all separated and, um, it was just a nightmare to work with. And I dropped it once and made a dent in my studio floor. <laughs> Surprise. So yeah. And of course this just jiggle it back and forth. You can take it apart. I pressed it in there real good, but just like that. Okay. And then remember that there's just the one little screw underneath here that you put on with a, um, the Phillips screwdriver and that's it. So super easy to do. If you find that you are using, and the thing with this is that every machine is going to be slightly different, right? You'll have different size and different shaped spool caps. So I would say whatever you're using up top here, play around with the spool caps. If your machine comes with multiple different ones, try them on, you know, try out the different ones. Sometimes I don't like my thread to be super snug. On some machines, it works better if it kind of moves a little bit. All that stuff can kind of affect your tension and your stitch quality. For me, I tend to put that one in like that so that it still rolls pretty easily, but it's not like clanking around side to side. So just keep an eye on that if you're putting in a new spool also, because if you're starting off with a big chunky spool, you might find, depending on your machine and the room that you have in this area, that it hits so some of you are probably like, oh, yeah, that's what happened to me that one time I was trying out the new thread. There are so many variables, y'all, that go into troubleshooting your specific make and model. So hopefully I shared some tips with y'all here today that you can implement based on the machine that you have at home. And if you have not tried quilting with glide thread, like a 40 weight polyester thread for some decorative stitching on your projects, that you try it out because it's super easy to do. All right, let's see. Um, okay, Debbie's asking, Vanessa, would you be able to order glide size M bobbins, the magnetic one? So this is something that I'm looking to add into our inventory next, both L size and M size. If you have no idea what we're talking about, chances are you don't have a long arm because the, not all, some long arm machines take M bobbins. They're just bigger and they hold more thread. Uh, and so, uh, glide makes them th so that they're already pre-wound. I have a ton. The long arm that I used to use the Glide pre-wounds on, or that I still do, uh, is um, it takes an L size bobbin, which is a smaller, more regular version, but it saves you a ton of time, right? If you don't have to be winding your bobbins every time to match the matching color. So you just keep them in these little tins and you put the thread that you want to use on top for free motion quilting, and then you pop the matching bobbin in so you don't have to take time to wind them all. But yes, Debbie, thanks. That's a great question. And we will be adding more of the Glide products into our inventory. Um, as time goes on. And of course, if there's ever something that you really want specifically, just shoot us an email and let us know. And that way with our next order, we can order that stuff in and then let you know when it's in. Okay. All right. Let's see. Okay. I don't see that I'm missing anyone. Oh, Lucretia's asking, is this a construction thread? So great question. It is not, not that it cannot be used because 40 weight is still substantial enough, right? It's not super thin, but because of the shine and the silkiness to it, I only use it for decorative purposes. Okay. So I will use it for top stitching, free motion stuff that we just did here for quilting stuff like this. You can barely see it like this, but there's slightly wavy lines of the light gray thread for my free motion and freehand quilting that I do on the long arm. I use it. And then I also use it in machine embroidery. So it's that kind of a thread, the same way that you wouldn't use like your rayon threads or your shiny, silky, uh, polyester threads for machine embroidery to construct the seam. It's the same idea. All right. So I would use something stronger, even if it is a polyester, but one that's not as shiny and as silky. Okay. Something more like, um, the stuff I use when I'm making garments, like a Guterman thread that's polyester. So the polyester part of it, making it, uh, being that it's man-made and a synthetic is going to make it a lot stronger. So for garments, especially that's what I prefer to use over cotton thread because it's going to hold up to the wear and tear, especially me that I love to make garments out of stretch knit fabrics, things that are going to be getting stretched at the seam. You definitely want to make sure that you have a good quality, uh, synthetic thread so that it can hold up to the wear and tear. All right, let's see. Bum, bum, bum. All right. Okay, good. 
Well, I hope that I shared some tips with you all there. And you, oh, did you have a question? No. Okay. Yeah. So hopefully you got some tips. Maybe you have some of these items at home already. <laughs> when you're working on your next project, go ahead and give it a try. And then I also wanted to mention, because we were talking a little bit about the mug rugs. Remember how I did it where we did quilt as you go just through the batting. Then I said, add the backing fabric. Now, when I add the backing fabric, if you have decorative stitches on your machine or you have an embroidery machine, you can then go ahead and use the glide thread and do some stitching now through all the layers, right? There's so many different ways that you can use that decorative stitching thread. If you have decorative stitches on your machine, on a shiny thread like Glide, it just pops. So whether it's as basic as a zigzag or something a little bit fancier, it would look great on these little projects if you wanna go through after you do the quilt as you go and add some more, you know, another level of a decorative element to your project. So definitely think about doing that as well. Okay, and I just X'd out of here, but let me see what else is coming in. Let's see, Tammy's asking, do you still have the pattern for your reversible apron that's like a shirt? Ooh, I'm, are you talking about the cross bod, the crisscross apron, that Mary Malari pattern that we sell in the shop? I'm not sure because she's saying reversible apron that's like a shirt. I'm lost. <laughs> Tammy, go ahead and send me an email and um, maybe we can figure it out together what exactly it is that you're referring to, okay. Let's see. Oh, no problem. Miss Monique says, thank you for the thread demonstration. That was very helpful. Victoria says, thanks for the info. I'm glad to help. Oftentimes, this kind of info and, and seeing it in play like that and knowing what is it that you need to do and how each, a pattern is not going to tell you that, right? If somebody's teaching you a basic class, they're focusing on whatever the project or the technique is. These are all like behind the scenes, little things that you need to work out and troubleshoot on your machine. So I'm happy to share and just, you know, show you uh, how different machines work, different threads and different things like that. So you can see how that applies to what your specific setup is at home. Okay. So I'm so glad that y'all appreciate that and that you enjoyed my tips. Um, Sherry's asking, what size needle do I use with the glide thread? So I mentioned earlier that here on this sewing machine for these little, um, straight lines of stitching and stuff, I just use an 8012. Okay. It's not like a super thick thread either that you need to have a huge needle, but when I'm using it on the long arm, depending on the machine and because of the high speed of freehand quilting that I like to stitch at, <laughs> I do everything super fast. Uh, I use on the on my long arm either 116, sometimes a 9014 uh, size needle. It just depends, right? But the, the glide will work on a regular sewing machine with an 8012 needle. Works just fine. That's exactly what I did here, okay? All right, so that is going to be it for today. Hopefully, like I said earlier, if y'all have some of this stuff on hand, take it out, try some decorative stitching, order yourself a couple colors of the glide thread, something neutral that you know you'll be able to use in a ton of your projects, and give it a try. You don't need to have a fancy setup. You can easily get to quilting like this. Um, even on this machine, y'all saw how I did it. So remember that you can always shop with us any of the items that I mentioned here, including the sewing machine, the thread, the thread stand, all that. We have it in stock in our online shop at craftygemini.com slash shop. All right. So thanks again, everybody, for tuning in. I will be back on Friday. If you're new around here, I go live Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Eastern and Fridays at 7 p.m. Eastern. So I will see you in a couple of days. And I hope that y'all enjoy the rest of your week. Thanks again for tuning in. Bye. The sewing machine, the thread.